Will humans not be inter interacting with vehicles or at the moment you're working with a dual sort of project? So, uh, yeah, I'm an MIT professor and I've been involved in this technology my whole career and I have this amazing opportunity now to work with Toyota who chose Boston as one of the places for its new Toyota Research Institute laboratories for the access to talent and the whole sort of technology network here. And so we're pursuing a dual strategy, something we call chauffeur, which is full self-driving, also called level four, but also something called guardian, which is uh, we have a human driven car, but an autonomy system running in the background in parallel, ready to jump in to take over to try to improve safety. So does that mean when it will just be a step towards fully autonomous vehicles? Will, we, will the interim period be that there will always be a human behind the wheel with access to that wheel? It's, it's a great question. I think there are many paths. Um, I think self-driving is the space race in tech of the 21st century. We have the traditional OEMs, the tier one suppliers, the small startups like Optimus Ride, and the big tech giants like Apple and Google and Intel and NVIDIA. And um, there are many different paths, but it's, it's clear to me that we're going to have human cars for a long time, the average cars on the road at least 10 years. And so the interaction of humans and machines opens up a whole new space of interesting challenges. Does it, do the human inherently make them less safe? If it... That's a great question. Um, a lot of accidents are indeed due to human error, but human skills are actually very complementary to AI technology. Humans are bad at sort of monitoring an autonomous system for a very long time. Uh -huh. If a car can do 99% of the job, but you have to be ready to jump in at a moment's notice for 1% of the job, that's actually quite hard. Whereas autonomy can be ever vigilant and can help the human in, say, an unexpected situation. Like how? So for example, um, I think a lot about making left turns across traffic. I have a teenager that's learning how to drive here in the Boston area. And uh, we have some really challenging intersections here. Yeah. And that whole question of how you get the experience to make decisions, uh, make solving a kind of physics problem, is it safe for me to go, but also a social interaction problem. A lot of times you have to wave at other drivers to sort of let them let you in. Those are actually really challenging problems for machines to solve. So how will the AI inherently nudge the human right. to say, okay, now you need to step right. in, when it's stop drinking your coffee, stop listening to the right. music, you need to work well, it. Well, to me, I, I, I believe that driving is something we should be paying attention all the time. It should be our number one job. But mm -hmm. current technology like automatic emergency braking, the car can step in and, and sort of slow the vehicle down. But imagine a more uh, broader set of capabilities where the car might take evasive maneuvers. If you could stay on the road, don't hit things, don't get hit, you, you could probably dramatically reduce accidents. And so if going back to that left turn across traffic incidents, if say a teenager or an elderly driver went to go when there was a car coming, perhaps the view is occluded, the autonomy might step in and prevent them from going. It might have the sort of uh, perceptual awareness, the sort of 360 degree view that can help the human who's sort of looking back and forth trying to say, is it safe to go or not? And so what's your view in terms of when that will become ready and it in use on the road, and then when we will have full autonomy? Yeah, so that whole question of when is so hard to answer, <laughs> and I, I tend to be more on the contrarian side. I think it's going to be longer than a lot of other folks think, but from a Toyota perspective, we're pursuing all product sort of opportunities, and, and, and I can't say like any specific dates. What I would say, it's not so much a question of when for full autonomy, but where. There are limited deployments happening, for example, Waymo in Arizona, these sort of trials here in South Boston, and so technology might be, and some folks have commented on the uh, some, some journalists that it's a bit like think of an early cell phone coverage map where initially the cell phones might only work in big cities or in mm. selected areas and over time they sort of grew to cover larger areas. Uh, autonomy might sort of percolate slowly out of certain urban centers and then and then have broader coverage but it might take a lot longer than people think. Is regulation the hurdle here? Uh, I, I think regulation is an issue um, especially if you know there but I'm not really an expert on regulation, on mm. just purely the technology aspects, things like interacting with police officers and traffic cops and dealing with the snow that we get here in Boston and across much of the country. Uh, there are a lot of technical challenges, road construction. So there's plenty of technological challenges I think that still need a lot of work if we're going to sort of achieve the equivalent of the 2018 cell phone coverage map of the US for full autonomy. That could take a very long time. What about the infrastructure, 5G? So. Uh, 
So vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure communications are not part of our current mandate at Toyota Research Institute. We're thinking more about machine learning, artificial intelligence, and harvesting data and interacting with people. But Toyota has recently announced that it's introducing the DSRC communication chips in all its vehicles soon. And, and as a technologist, I want every tool in the toolbox. And so I'm actually, I think if cars can communicate with each other and help each other out of tricky situations, maybe we can get a sort of social good will emerge that perhaps unfriendly Boston drivers, their cars will be friendly to one another and they will help each other navigate these challenging roads around here.